Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this um, short video I'm going to have a look at some lens filters I acquired. Now, lens filters are potentially useful. I feel some people use them too often, but they do have the uses. Now, in particular, I'm going to look at some I got from a charity shop, so I paid next to nothing for them. They're from uh, film era, so they're at least 25 years old. You can find things like this quite cheap, and I found these just in a small box, and I paid a few pounds for them. And I thought, well, I don't know what they do. We'll have a look. Now, lens filters, as I say, Commonly, um, I've got sort of things like neutral density filters, polarizing filters. I got things like that. These larger filters, they're the ones I use because the lenses I use tend to be larger. These particular ones that I came by, and here's the stack of them that I found in the shop, um, are a 49 millimeter thread. Now that's quite small, so it's going to be limited usage. Now the pictures where I tested them I took on the EOS RP that I'm using with a, an Olympus 24mm lens. That's 49mm filter size. So they work just fine with that. Uh, but, you know, different types of effects filters. Now effects filters used to be popular. I remember during the 70s, 80s there was uh, quite a craze for various special effects filters you could drop in front. They were coke in ones and variations of that. Um, even then, I thought, why would you want to use these? You've got one shot, you've done it. Oh, there's the effect, now what? Um, with digital, it's far easier to try things, so at least you're not wasting film, but I have wondered what they're actually for. But let's have a quick look at these, because they tell me something not only about uh, the differences between digital and film, but also in color and black and white, because People think uh, digital black and white, unless you're using a uh, monochrome camera like one of the uh, Leica ones, uh, that they're fairly simple. You just take the color away. They're actually quite subtly different. Now, I've done stuff about black and white, and I'll refer to a bit here, but I've got lots more things about black and white photography, digital photography, on the Northlight website and the uh, channel here. Um, I've got loads of things on, the, on YouTube for it. But anyway... Here's the first one of the filters. Um, this one has a, is a three-way prism, and looking at it, it splits images into three. Um, yeah, it's, I'm sure effects like this were very popular on sort of pop music programs in the 1970s. That's Top of the Pops for those of you in the UK. Uh, you will see this, you will move it around and you'll instantly think, yeah, it looked naff then, it looks naff now. Um, I'll keep it. I have no idea what I might actually use this for. I'm sure when it was sold, uh, there were some example pictures, but basically it splits an image, offsets it by three. Um, so you don't really see much. Um, you know, it has weird effects on faces and things like that. Uh, I did say I didn't pay much for these. Um, if you're wondering why I'm looking at things like this, it is because if there's one thing I suggest people do, it is experiment. Try things just for the hell of it. Try things and see whether what you learn from it. Now, it turned out I learned a few things from this. Um, not what I thought I might, but this particular one, um, I don't know how much somebody paid for this, but uh, it was too much. Now, the next one. This is a split lens. What we've got is a meniscus, positive meniscus lens, a magnifying glass, uh, that is just half of the uh, of the lens, so it's been it's a lens that's been cut in half. Um, the example here, I'm holding it, looking at uh, this dice, and you can see that it magnifies half of the image. You think, well, what uses half a magnified image? Think of it a different way. It allows you to focus closer in half of the image. So if I take a shot like this, and this, here we go, I'm sitting somewhere, um, I've got a tripod sitting on the table. Um, it's once again taken with the 24 millimeter lens I'm using here. Uh, I think it's f5.6 or something like that. So it's a little soft in the background. I'm focused on the close-up things here. If I add this split lens, 
The magnifying side of the lens is on this side of the frame, so it's focusing closer, it's larger, and I've now been able to focus further in the background. So effectively, I've got a sharp focus, well, somewhere around here, and sharp focus over here, with a slightly fuzzy border down the middle. Um, now, if I just go back, you'll see the difference between the two. Um, it did remind me partially of why I might use lens tilt to run the plane of focus, say, along the tripod here. Um, much more complicated, vastly more expensive, um, and I would also say considerably more useful. Um, another thing that, um, yeah, I'm sure there was a use for somewhere, but um, I don't know what it was. It's an effect. Let's have a quick look at colour and black and white. Um, most coloured filters from the film era were intended for black and white film. They modify the light that the film captures and by modifying the light, they change the tonal balance of an image. Now, I've got lots of stuff about black and white to colour, uh, colour to black and white conversion. Um, and if you're interested in that, I have an entire section in the Northlight website that's devoted to black and white. So here's a view in, uh, in Wyoming. I was driving across Wyoming one day, as you do, um, and stopped to look at these brilliantly orange rocks. Now, this is in spring, early spring, so there's still quite a lot of colour about. Uh, the green hasn't been bleached out, but it's very sharp contrast with the colours. Digital black and white generally takes the three, uh, three channels, the red, the green, the blue channels from your color image and mixes them, uses them accordingly to generate a monochrome image. If I look at just the green channel, for example, we've got that. That's a basic conversion to black and white. The green channel, it's picking up the clouds okay. The rocks, that looks reasonable. If I move to the red channel, so this is just looking at the red light in the scene. I get much higher contrast. Those orange rocks are reflecting a lot of red light, so they look bright. The blue sky has very little red light in it, so it looks very dark, and the clouds stand out against it. So that's you know, typically how you would use coloured filters on film to achieve a uh, various tonal balance. Now, if you look at some of the software that does conversions from color to black and white, things, uh, things like silver effects, and there's loads of other, the channel mixer in Photoshop or Lightroom, for example, it allows you to play around with the color mixing and do effects like this. You might think, since these are duplicating colored filter effects, that your colored filters will do the same thing when you convert your color, your digital color image into black and white. Well, here are the two colored filters I've got. One which is split, a green and orange. And one strange one here is uh, yellow uh, with a hole in the middle. Now, um, you need quite a wide aperture for the actual hole itself not to show up in the image, even though it's right in front of the lens. But let's just go there's a shot taken with the split filter. Now, remember what I said about uh, color and contrast? You would think that the orange filter would be good for skies and the green filter would be good for landscape. And that's typically what this sort of filter was used for. The orange half of it would apply to the sky, so it would give you a stronger contrast to the sky, whereas the green half of it would look better, give a more natural looking landscape. So typically used for landscape photography. So here we go, there's a shot for it. What happens when I turn this into black and white? Uh, I've rotated the uh, filter by 90 degrees in this so you can see the effect. Whereas with film, the orange and the green filters would both absorb similar amounts of light, so uh, you wouldn't see much of a change in exposure other than a general lowering of exposure. Here we can see that the green has made virtually no difference whereas the orange filter has just massively cut back on brightness. Now there is a bit more contrast in the sky uh, 
but I could do this in uh, Photoshop with this camera raw, or I could do it in Lightroom far more effectively than I can with this. It also shows that the effect of coloured light changes on an RGB sensor are not the same as the effects you would get on an emulsion, on a film. So if you're used to using coloured filters for film, in general, they don't work with digital. You might think, well, I'm still catching the light, surely it's the same. It's the way that the RGB channel is not the same as the full color spectrum that your film is sensitive to. So they're different in that respect. Once again, a filter of, I'm going to say, minimal use. Um, if it turns out these are collector's items and somebody wants one, do let me know. Um, you know I didn't pay much for them, so uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they do with uh, that. I'll just show you the, here's the, uh, the coloured filter uh, with the hole in the middle. Um, yeah, it sort of, well, it gives a yellow edge to a picture. Uh, once again, this would have looked very different on black and white film. So there you have it. There's converted to black and white. Not really much of a difference, uh, apart from seeing this fuzzy ring where you're seeing the hole in the lens. Now, this might work better at a slightly longer focal length. It's just 24 millimeter I'm shooting this with. So it might work better with that. But once again, no real effect on digital. So there you have it. Um, you know, the wonders of filters. Um, I've got lots more junk sitting about in, uh, in my drawers and that. And I will do some more of these little short videos because Getting stuff like this is fun to try, even if you decide it's useless. And it can teach you things about other aspects of your photography that you might not have thought of. So hope that's of some interest, uh, a quick wander through my junk drawer. And uh, if you find the channel interesting, most of the stuff is that I cover is much more up to date, um, then please do subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.